Hi everyone, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on UI developer interview questions. Okay, so we are continuing with our interview question series of videos, and this is one such topics that we received maximum amount of requests. So we have decided to come up with this video, and the whole idea behind this video is basically we have categorized the UI developer interview questions into two categories. Okay, so the first category is that of UI developers and the second one is that of front-end developers. Okay, so there is very little amount of difference between UI developer and front-end developer. Okay, they are almost one and the same. Okay, and the tools and technologies that are used for UI or front-end is, you know, these days there is a lot of demand from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, as well as one of the frameworks such as Angular or React. Okay, and previously what it used to be there was more demand of PHP. Okay, so basically a combination of PHP and MySQL. Okay, so that is the whole, you know, the concept of UI development or front-end development. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. As I told you, the first category of questions is for UI developers. Okay, and the first question over here is, how do you optimize a website's assets? Okay, so there are a few ways through which you can optimize a website's assets, such as file concatenation, file compression, CDN hosting, offloading assets, reorganizing and redefining code and so on. Okay, so this was a very simple question. And now let's move ahead to the next question. Okay, so the next question says, what are the three ways to reduce page load time? To reduce the page load time, what you can do is, you can reduce the image sizes, you can remove the unnecessary widgets, and you can also perform HTTP compression Apart from this, you can put CSS at the top and script references at the bottom or in the external files. Apart from this, what you can do is you can reduce the lookups, you can minimize the redirects, you can minimize the caching and so on. Okay, so these are some of the ways through which you can reduce the page load time. The next question is, what kind of things must you be wary of when the design or the developing multilingual sites? Okay. So multilingual sites is nothing but websites in one or more languages. Okay, so here what you can do is you can set the default language using the Unicode encoding and you can use the lang attribute and you should be aware of the standard font sizes and the text direction and you must also be aware of the language word length. Okay, so the, these are the things that you must be careful of when designing or developing multilingual websites. Okay. So now let's move ahead with the next question. So the next question is a very basic question and you must answer this question in the actual interview. So what do you mean by HTML? Okay, so HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is the dominant markup language for creating websites and anything that can be viewed inside a web browser. Okay, so if you want to get some extra bonus points, you can learn the history of HTML and throw in some obscure facts related to HTML. So let's move ahead to the next question. So the next question is, you know, based on the previous question, it says, what is the difference between HTML elements and tags? Okay, so HTML elements communicate to the browser on how to render the actual text, whereas when surrounded by angular brackets, they form the HTML tags. Okay, for most of the parts, the tags come in pairs and surround the actual text. Okay. So this was a critical difference between HTML elements and tags. The next question is, and this question I believe is very important. So what do you mean by semantic HTML? So semantic HTML is a coding style where the tags embody what the text is meant to convey. In semantic HTML, tags like for bold and for italic should not be used. And the reason for this is that they just represent formatting and provide no indication of meaning or structure. They semantically correct the thing to do and use these tags will have the same bold and italic effects while demonstrating meaning and structure. The next question is, what do you mean by doc type? So the term doc type tells the browser which type of HTML is used on web page. So in turn, the browser use doc type to determine how to render a page. So failing to use a doc type or using a wrong doc type may load your page in quirks mode. The next question is, what is the difference between standards mode 
and the quirks mode. So quirks mode is a default compatibility mode and it may be different from a browser to browser, which may result in lack of consistency in appearance from browser to browser. The next question is, what are the limitations when serving X HTML pages? So perhaps the biggest issue is the poor browser support X HTML currently enjoys. So Internet Explorer and a number of other user agents cannot parse the X HTML as XML. So thus it is not the extensible language it was promised to be earlier. Now the next question is how do you make comments without the text being picked up by the browser? So comments are used to explain and clarify the code or to prevent the code from being recognized by the browser. So here what you can do is your comments must start with an asterisk as you can see here and it must end with an arrow with a single line. Okay, so asterisk as you can see here, this is asterisk and your comment must end with this symbol. So basically a hyphen and a greater than symbol. The next question is what is the difference between linking to an image, a website and an email address. So to link an image, what you use is you use tags. You need to specify the image in quotes using the source attribute source in the opening tag. So for hyperlinking, the anchor tag is used and the link is specified in the href attribute. So the text to be hyperlinked should be placed between the anchor tags. So here href stands for hypertext reference. So when linking to an email, the href specification will be mail to colon and the email address that you want to link. So guys, the next question is, you know, kind of a scenario based question. So through this question, the interviewer wants to know whether you really have good amount of hands on experience with UI development or not. Okay, so the question says my hyperlink or image is not being displayed correctly. So what should be done to rectify this error or you can say what should be done to rectify this activity? So it could be any number of things, but the most common mistakes that you can do is you are leaving out a tag bracket or a quote is missing for H reference or source or alternate text may be the actual issue. So apart from this, what you should do is you should also verify the link in itself. So let's move on to the next question. So what is the syntax difference between a bulleted list and a numbered list? So bulleted list actually use the dual tag which stands for unordered whereas a numbered list uses ol which is nothing but an ordered list. So guys this was all about the UI developer interview questions and the next set of questions is for front end developers. Okay so now let's move to the next question. So let's move to the next question. So what is the difference between absolute relative static and fixed positions? So if you talk about static position so it is a default position even if we do not specify any position or value for the elements the system automatically sets the default values and they are unchangeable and now if you talk about relative position so if you want to change the position of the elements you can use the relative so when you are changing the elements position to a relative it changes the position of the elements by using some of the attributes and these attributes are alignment and size and now if you talk about absolute in absolute user can change the element position and generally absolute will place relative to the parent. So if a parent is not available to the page itself, then by default it is placed as a relative position. And the last point over here is fixed position. So it will place the relative element to the browser window or the view port. So when scrolling happens, view port doesn't change. So the position is fixed for the element. So now let's move ahead to the next question. So what do you mean by a responsive website? So any website that means to be responsive when it fits any system, screen resolution, device types, looks good at any size and it is understandable to the user. The next question is explain the difference between inline, inline block and block. So if you talk about block, it will always start in the new line and it fills the right and the left horizontal space on the web page. So apart from this, it can also add margins and padding to the web page. And the next point over here is inline element. So these elements do not start in the new line. So they appear in the same line. So in this case, you cannot add space to the top and the bottom paddings to the page, but you can add space to the left and the right of an inline element. And the third point over here is 
inline block. So in these elements are similar to the inline elements, but padding and margins are added on all of the four sides of the web page. So whenever you're asked such kind of questions, like explain the difference between inline, inline block and block. So what you can do is, apart from mentioning the definitions, you can also give or you can also use examples. So this will help the interviewer understand that you are very much clear with the conceptual concepts. Or so this will help the interviewer to understand that you are very clear with the basic concepts. So let's move to the next question. So the next question says, does HTML need a compiler? So the answer to this question is no. HTML does not need any compiler because it is a frontend language. Whereas in case of pro other programming languages such as Java, C, C++, so they need a compiler to convert the code into machine language or you can say the machine understandable language. So let's move to the next question. So the next question is, what is the difference between a document and a window? So the window is the first thing that loads into the browser. So it has properties like inner width, inner height, length, name, and so on. And if you talk about the document, so the document gets loaded inside the window object. So it is similar to HTML, PHP, and other documents which are loaded into the browser, and they have properties like title, URL, cookies, and so on. So let's move to the next question. So the next question says, what is web accessibility? So web accessibility means providing access to the website for differently abled and disabled persons. So this is done so that disabled people can understand, navigate, and interact with the web easily. So the next question is, what is JavaScript hosting? So guys, this is one of the very frequently asked front-end developer, or you can say UI developer interview question. So to access the variables in JavaScript, the first thing that you must do is, you have to declare the variables. So if variables are defined at the bottom of the script, but JavaScript throws variables before it is undefined. So in JavaScript, only assigned variables are hosted. So the next question is, create an array in JavaScript with a list of five cities and assign that array to the variable city. So in JavaScript, what you can do is, you can simply define a variable called city. And inside that variable, in square brackets, what you can do is, you can mention the name of five cities that you want. Okay, so in this case, what we have done is, we have simply written where city, which is a variable name. And after that, you have mentioned the equal to sign and in square brackets, in single quotes, you have mentioned the city names. So here, what we have taken is New York, London, Sydney, Hyderabad, and Montreal. Now, the next question is, how do you select all the elements within the class in jQuery? Okay, so to select all the elements within the class in jQuery, what you use, you use the dot and apart from this, what you have done is you have added or you can, you can say you have concatenated the variable name and this is done in round brackets. And after that, what you use, you use dot show method. Okay, so this will select all the elements within the class in jQuery. Now, the next question is declare a new variable in PHP equal to the number six. This is a very simple question. You simply have to define a variable in PHP and assign a value of six to it. So what you can do is you can use number equal to six. The next question is how do you check if a variable has been set in PHP? So to check a variable in PHP, what you use is you use the is set method. So the syntax is very simple for this. You simply write is set and you mention the variable name over here. The next question is, how do you access a get request URL parameter with PHP? So to access a get request URL parameter with PHP, what you use is you use the get method and inside that you mention whatever thing that you want. Okay, so here you can pass any parameter such as here we have passed Turkey. The next question is, what is the difference between HTML and XHTML? So as we have already discussed, HTML is a hypertext markup language, whereas XHTML is extensible hypertext markup language. So both of these languages are used to create the web pages. So XHTML is XML based, whereas HTML is SGML based. So compared to HTML, XHTML is strict and does not allow the users to get away with lapses in coding and structures. The next question is, what is the difference between local storage, session storage, and cookies? So if you talk about local storage, so it allows you to store the data without any expiry limits. In case of cookies, it allows you to store the data within the client and the server. And if you talk about session storage, so this stores data when the window was opened. 
And now let's move ahead. The next question is, what can you do to increase the page performance? So to increase the page performance, what you can do is you can reduce the sizes of the images that is present on your website. Apart from this, you can clear the caches. You can also reduce the external HTTP request and you can load the JavaScript asynchronously. And last but not the least, what you can do is you can code your site for mobile as well. Let's move to the next question. And the next question is describe the new elements to HTML. So to change some of the features in HTML, new elements used are semantic tags and multimedia and graphic tags. So semantic tags are a figure, header, footer, mark, and multimedia, and graphic tags are audio and the canvas. The next question is, tell me how float works. So float pushes the element to the right or left, and float property has four values, and they are inherited left, right, and none. So guys, with this, we have come to the end of this session on UI developer interview questions. So in this video, we have tried to cover maximum questions that you can face in the actual interview. If you have any doubts related to this session, then you can write your doubts or queries in the comment section, and we will try to resolve your doubts and queries as soon as possible. So guys, thank you so much for being with us, and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming UI developer interview.